Right, this is lesson 3.5, graph scale change, video number one. We're going to start with a, a drill from today, where we were asked to um, do uh, translations of graphs. So number one asks us to graph an x cubed equation. I always think to myself what the parent function is. I know its y equals x cubed, and I know that that graph looks like this. So according to this translation, I need to go 2 to the left because x lies in the equation and 4 down because y tells the truth. So I'm going to go 2 to the left and 4 down and then I'll just draw my curve through there like that. For this uh, next one, I realize that this is a quadratic, y equals x squared, and I know that that is a u-shaped graph. According to this translation, I'm going 3 to the right because the equation x lies in the equation, and y tells the truth. So 3 to the right and 1 up. And I draw my U-shaped graph. All right, the next one, my parent function is Y equals the square root of X. I know that my sketch looks very similar to that square root symbol. And I look at what's happening in my equation. X lies, so it's going to be X minus 5. Don't see anything happening to Y. So I'm simply going to move 5 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and draw my curve. Notice again on all of them, um, we follow the translation rule, um, not the equation. If you look at each of these, I do exactly what the rule says to do, not necessarily the equation, especially when it comes to x. All right, and this last one, is y equals 1 divided by x, which is my graph with my asymptotes and my curves. Here I have asymptotes on the x and the y axis. So for this one, my translation rule is x plus 4, because x lies in the equation, and y minus 3 because y tells the truth. So I'm going to go 4 to the right and 3 down. And that's going to be the center of my graph where I'm going to um, draw my asymptotes. And then I draw inverse curves. Okay. All right, let's look at our next page from our drill. This time you're given the um, graph and you're asked to write the equation. So again, the first thing I have to do is figure out the parent function. This is a V-shaped graph, so I know it's Y equals absolute value of X. I see that I moved 1, 2, 3, or 5 to the right, and 3 down. So I'm going to take that translation rule, and I'm going to apply it to the parent function. So it becomes y equals the absolute value of x minus 5. Notice that x lies in the equation. It's plus 5 in the rule, so it's minus 5 in the equation. But y tells the truth. So there's my equation for that graph. All right, on this next one here, I realize that this is a y equals 1 divided by x. When I go to figure out my translation rule, I realize it's going to be easier if I try and draw the asymptotes here. Oh, did I do oh, I did that in the wrong place, actually. Let's see. So my highlight is going to be a little... Um, it's going to be hard to show exactly where it is with the highlighter. So I'm going to do 
that. Come across here. So right here is where my asymptotes meet. And that's at x minus 2 and y1 to minus 3. So once I figure out where those asymptotes are, I can now write my equation. y equals 1 divided by x plus 2, because x lies in the equation, minus 3. Let's go to our third graph here. I realize that this is a y equals x squared parent function. My translation rule, let's see, I moved 1 to the right and 3 up. So in my equation, I need to remember that x lies. So these are opposite, but y tells the truth. And for my last graph, I recognize that this is a y equals 1 divided by x squared. And in order to figure out that translation rule, I'm going to need to figure out my asymptotes. So I'd have an asymptote there. The detail goes right to there. It's almost touching, but not quite. And so I move 4 to the right and 4 up x plus 4, y plus 4. So when I write my equation, I get y equals 1 divided by x minus 4 squared, because x lies in the equation, plus 4. y tells the truth. And that completes our drill. All right, so um, let's look at what we have learned about changing the graphs so far. We have learned that x lies in the equation and y tells the truth always. We have learned that the rule never lies. And we have also learned that it is always best to start with the parent function. So those are three pretty important things that we've learned so far. Today we're going to learn about graph scale change. So rather than sliding the parent function around on the graph, we're going to either make it larger or smaller. So we're going to be um, expanding or contracting it. And the way we write graph scale change, rather than T for translation, we use a capital S. And we say that that original XY is going to now become A times X, B times Y. Now, for this particular scale change, in the equation, we would have x divided by a, and we would have um, y multiplied by b, which makes sense because x always lies in the equation, and of course y tells the truth. Another way we could write our uh, graph scale change would be to say S, where we have X, Y as the original. We could have X divided by A, Y divided by B. Now, of course, for this in the equation, we would have X multiplied by A, and we would have Y divided by B, because as we have learned, X lies in the equation, and Y always tells the truth. Okay, so let's go down to some of our examples.
for us um, we're given the image write the parent function the scale change and describe the stretch or shrink All right so when i look at um, letter a as we always said start with the parent y equals the square root of x so i need to write um, the scale change s of x y would become let's see I'm multiplying by 5 in the equation to the x, which means I'd actually be dividing by 5 in the scale change. And that 4 that's out in front is being multiplied by the whole thing. That's what's affecting the y, so that's 4 times y. Notice x lies in the equation because I have multiplied by 5. Here I have divided by 5. Y tells the truth, multiply by 4, multiply by 4. So what is actually happening here, um, because I'm dividing the X, and X is horizontal, I would say that I have a horizontal shrink, and I have a vertical, because Y is vertical, stretch. I'm going to take this graph and I'm going to shrink it horizontally and then stretch it vertically. Let's go to letter B. Again, start with the parent. Y equals absolute value of X. Let's write that scale change. What's happening to X? In the equation, I'm dividing by 6, which means in the scale change, I'm actually multiplying by 6. And for y, I'm multiplying by a third. So I can just write one third y, because y tells the truth. Another way I could write this would be y divided by 3. Because when you multiply by a third, you're technically dividing by 3. So what's happening here? I'm multiplying. Um, by x, so I'm having a horizontal stretch. And vertically, because I'm multiplying by a third, it's going to get smaller. Or I'm dividing by three, so it's going to get smaller. So it's a vertical shrink. Okay, let's look at this next one, letter C. We have um, x squared, so we, our parent function is y equals x squared, my scale change. Let's see, since the 4 is in parentheses with the x, it's affecting the x, which means it's actually going to be x divided by 4, because x lies in the equation, this is multiplied by 4, this is divided, and there is no multiplier out in the front, so nothing is happening to the y. So I say that I have a horizontal, which is on the x, shrink, because I'm dividing, it's getting smaller, and uh, no, nothing on the vertical, so I don't really have to write anything. I can just say horizontal shrink and leave it at that. And then this last one, I have y equals x cubed is my uh, parent function, my scale change. Look at this. The um, 3 is being multiplied by the x inside the parentheses, which means I'd have x divided by 3. And then I have the 3 on the outside, which means I have 3 times y. So I have a horizontal shrink. And I have a vertical stretch. Just want to remember again that horizontal is always with the x and vertical is always with the y. And notice once again we have three times x in the equation, so we have x divided by three in the rule and y tells the truth.